Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be training a convolutional neural network using the data from the large fish data set that we went over in our last video. In this example, we are going to be using a method called transfer learning. Transfer learning is when we take a pre-trained network that has been trained on a larger data set with many classes. In our case, that is going to be the ImageNet data set and it, the network is going to be MobileNet version 2 or MobileNet v2. This is a great way for beginners to learn how to train a neural network. You don't have to worry about building as many layers or figuring out the correct architecture. You can just grab this pre-trained model, slap on uh, some classification layers, compile, and fit it. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. To begin, we do need to do our imports. Uh, we are using TensorFlow, we're using an RTX 3060, and this is Visual Studio Code. So the first thing we are going to do is going to uh, set our uh, device to the GPU. This will guarantee that the GPU is being used. So this is important if uh, you have multiple uh, GPUs in your system and you want to make sure you use one, or uh, you want to uh, force it to use the, G the CPU instead. And I show you what all these mean in another video which I will link above. And now we're going to set our regular imports. So we need a, we're using TensorFlow 2.5, and we're going to be using Keras as our essentially a shorthand to getting everything done quicker. Oh, not import from. And then we are going to import uh, a TensorFlow or a Keras utility, which is our application, MobileNet v2, and the preprocess input for it. So the preprocess input makes sure that the data is normalized as MobileNet is expecting it. And I believe that is between negative one and positive one. So we don't have to write our own normalization functions. And then we're going to be using image data generator as our function to load our data in from the directories. And finally, we are going to be importing some layers from TensorFlow. Oh, that's strange. Dense and global average pooling 2D. And we're going to import the atom optimizer. Make sure we typed all this in correctly. Uh, let's see. Oh, why did it do that again? Perfect. Now we are also going to be limiting our uh, GPU memory growth which is uh, very important uh, if your network is very large and you wanna, or not very large, you wanna train multiple networks. In this case, it's gonna increase our training by a little bit, not by much, just a couple seconds every epic. Um, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this in um, from another file I have here. So we have our TensorFlow imported, and then we set our physical devices to everything that has the name of GPU. And then we grab the first device in that list, and we set memory growth to true. 
That way, if the network only needs four gigs of RAM, VRAM, it's only going to use four gigs of VRAM. Now we're going to gather our data. So our data, uh, we're going to get a, a train path and a validation path. So our data set is saved on a on the drive here, and this one here is going to be validation and we are going to use the image data generator which is uh, a function in tensorflow or really in within Keras that uh, generates your data it's a generator so it yields data it generates it as it's requested instead of storing it all in memory at once and this also um, make sure that your data is passed through correctly in the correct size. You set your batch size and you tell it to flow from directory, which we'll see right here. Image data generator. We're going to set a preprocess function equal to our preprocess input. And then we are going to flow from directory, train path, target size and in our case our target size is going to be 590 by 445 and we're going to set a batch size equal to 30 and then we're just going to copy this so we don't have to type it all out again and we're going to valid path and we're going to set our batch size to 20. so this should work uh, we have an extra Dot there seems to be happening a lot today and we have 8,100 images belonging to nine classes in our training data set and we have 900 images belonging to nine classes in the validation data set so I've already there were a thousand images per class but I already split that up and now they are uh, split into the valid and 10% of them are validation so we have a good set to good way to test the model also Within the image data generation, we could add in augmentations as well, and you could see those augmentation options in the TensorFlow and Keras API, but we are not going to be adding those for now because this is just a proof of concept. Later on, we might be adding that in a video. And another reason we don't need to add it is this data set already has some of those augmentations added. All the images already have certain rotations on them, and uh, that is one of the augmentations that they have. It just makes a more robust data set. So now our data is gathered, and now we're gonna build our model. So we're gonna create a variable called base model, and this is gonna be mobile net v2. We're gonna set the weights equal to image net, and we are gonna include top equals false. So what this is doing is it is loading our pre-trained mobile net with image net weights, and it including top uh, is going to use the classification later that they have if that's set to true. So however many classes are in ImageNet, I believe several thousand. But we're going to chop that off and set it to false. So now we have to add our own classification layers. So now we're going to set x equal to global average pooling 2D. And we are going to... Ah, first we need to get our output from the pre-trained model x equals base model dot output. Um, so we are using the functional API here. I do have a previous video on that as well, where we take this model, we're taking the output of it, and then we're using uh, essentially the call function, uh, which doesn't have, you know, you don't see the words for it, but essentially we're calling global average pulling 2D, and we're passing in the previous layer. Next, we're going to add a dense layer. We're going to make it 512 nodes. Activation equals relu and x. And then we're going to get a second one of these. Activation will set 256. And we're going to set another one, 128. These can be pretty much any values you want. But the last one, we are going to set to 9 because this is our final classification layer. We are going to set uh, this to softmax. 
So this is going to predict probabilities between 0 and 1 for every single one of these nine outputs. And finally, we are going to build our model by wrapping it in the model class. Model equals model uh, input inputs equal base model dot input and the outputs equals, I'm gonna call these predictions. So I'm gonna change this name here, prints. So if we hit enter here, it is giving us a warning that the input shape of 590 by 445 is not square. So they are gonna just be using the default weights for 224 by 224. Um, these are the standard options for MobileNet V2. This is gonna use the one closest to what we're asking for. Um, if we were, because of this, our pre-trained weights are not gonna be as perfect as they could be. If we were using that something that was 224 by 224, it'd be a lot better to start off, but that is not the case right now. The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to, uh, I'm gonna do a quick addition here, and we're gonna do model.summary. So this is printing out all the layers that we have. We have our input layer, and then we have a convolutional layer, and then batch norm, and then depth-wise convolutions, and a whole bunch of convolutional blocks, as we can see here. There are uh, 16 convolutional blocks within the uh, MobileNet V2, and on the out set here, we do have a global average pooling. This is the layer we added to it. Then we have our dense layers. And right now, almost all the layers are trainable. The ones that are not trainable are batch norm, and I believe uh, that is it. So batch norm layers are not trainable. There's nothing that you're training, you're just normalizing the data. Um, so what we want to do is we don't want to train the entire network again. That will take away from the idea of using a pre-trained model. It will help some, but not as effective. So what we want to do is we want to figure out where we want, we only want to train the layers at the end. So we only want to train these guys right here. So we want to say for layers in model.layers, and we're going to say just the last five. So this is from, um, The, it's counting backwards, so it's going to count from the first, or from the first one, no, and then this is the negative first, second, third, fourth, and fifth layer here. So we're going to grab, or everything but those, my fault. So we're going to go through all the layers except the last five. So all the way from the top here, from our input layer, all the way down to that negative fifth layer. So one, two, three, four, five. So everything up to this point we are going to loop through all those layers and we are going to set layer dot layers dot trainable equal to false. And after this, we are going to add another model dot summary and everything looks exactly the same, but the one difference is we only have 8,200 trainable parameters and we have over 2 million non-trainable parameters. This will also speed up the network training because the back propagation will not feed through all these layers and change the weights of those layers. So finally here, we have our model built. Now we just have to compile it and train on it. So we're gonna set a batch size. we don't need to set a batch size because we've already set that in our generator. We just need to set epics equal to, we'll say 20 epics here. We're gonna set our optimizer equal to atom, which we imported before. And we're gonna set the learning rate equal to 0 0.0001. We're gonna have a slightly lower learning rate than normal. Then we're gonna model.compile loss equals, we're gonna use categorical cross entropy, oracle cross entropy. We are going to optimizer equals optimizer, oh, not optional, optimizer. 
and we're gonna set our metrics that we are gonna show equal to accuracy. So while it's training, we'll see the accuracy being printed out, and then the validation data will get passed through, and we'll see the validation data getting passed, uh, printed out as well. And then we're gonna model.fit uh, train generator, which is our training data, and then we're gonna set our validation data equal to valid generator. I think I made a mistake at the very top here. Let's see if we can get up here real quick. Aha, so we did make a mistake. We did not name that properly, which is fine. We have not run the command yet. So that is better now. And we're gonna set epics equal to epics. And now we're gonna run this. Oh, let's see, we have a mistake. Optimizer. There we go. And uh, we have another error. I spelt categorical cross entropy wrong. This is what happens when I try to write everything properly. Nice and slow for everyone to follow. This is normal when you're training a network. You might spell something wrong, but it's good to just know what these errors could be. So now we are training. I am going to fast forward some once this gets going. Um, it is saying it's going to take about a mm, about two minutes per epic, and I'll come back after a few epics and see how accurate we are. are going to stop this a little bit early because we already have 100% accuracy. Only after four epics or so, uh, as we can see, our uh, average uh, time was about a hundred seconds per epic. Uh, with, the first one was a bit longer because that was the first time loading in the data from disk through the generator, uh, and accuracy Validation accuracy was 99.67%. Uh, and then after that, it was 100%. So that just proves we don't need to do that much training. And we do have a fully trained network. Now that was very quick, just a few minutes. Just a quick review here. Uh, I'm going to uh, collapse these just so we don't have to scroll. Uh, can I do that? Let's see. Collapse a lot, but there we go. I know you could do this in uh, Jupyter really good. Collapse cell output. Perfect. Now I don't have to scroll as much. So in this tutorial, we loaded data from our fish data set. We built a model uh, using transfer learning, uh, training from this mobile net v2. Then we froze all the layers except the last two layers. And then we compiled and fit that model and after just two epics, we had 100% accuracy on the validation accuracy. That is amazing. So I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you learned something today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.